الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد I first of all want to apologize for coming late um, so please accept my apology inshallah ta'ala uh, the second thing is I also apologize again uh, for not being able to give the topic that I promised that I agreed to uh, but inshallah ta'ala if I live I will make sure that I cover this topic another time inshallah the topic that I want to go through is a advice that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave to the noble companion Abdullah ibn Abbas. Now, I'm going to be reading directly from the Kitab Nur al Iktibas fi Mishkati Wasiyat al Nabi ibn Abbas. A great scholar by the name of Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, he actually took this hadith and he explained it in a 157-page book. Again. I'm not going to go through all of that. I'm going to, inshallah ta'ala, cover the points that are relevant for us. Uh, so what's this advice? And what is this hadith? I'll go over the wording of the hadith, inshallah ta'ala. And then we will go through the how powerful this hadith is. And how, inshallah ta'ala, um, how relevant this is to each and every one of us. Does anyone know here the, the hadith that I might be reading? Has anyone here memorized it? Does anyone know it? Anyone? Anyone else? Anyone else? You guys must know it. Anyone else? From the youngsters, anyone know it? Okay. Well, today is going to be inshallah ta'ala the day you learn this hadith. This hadith is Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, Kuntu Kuntu Radif and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was one day sitting with the Prophet on a, a riding beast, and I was in the back. And the Prophet said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Ya Ulam, inni u'alimuka kalima. I'm going to teach you some words. So the messenger referred to Ibn Abbas as what? And he said to him, Ya Ulam, O young boy. And another wording of the hadith, he mentions that he said to him, uh, Ya Ulayyim. Uh, with another riwayah mentions that he said, Oh, young boy, baby boy. And the part that we're going to go over the hadith is, Before I go in, please pay attention with me. I'm not going to speak for much, inshallah ta'ala. This hadith is very powerful. We're only going to go through, That's it. We're not going to go through the rest. Okay? That's all. But listen to how powerful this hadith is. There's a great name, there's a great imam by the name of Abu Faraj ibn Jawzi rahimahullah. He has a kitab called Sayyidul Khatir. Sayyidul Khatir. It's a book where he wrote thoughts that came to his mind. If he came across a benefit, he write it down. He said regarding this hadith, he said that hadith, I contemplated and I pondered over this hadith. It blew my mind. Wakit to Abishu, I was about to fly with the hadith. This hadith took my heart and mind. And then he said in another place, Fawa asafa min al jahli behind al hadith. Wa illa tul fahim fahmi li ma'ana. He said, Sorrow, sadness is someone to be ignorant about this hadith, not to know what this hadith is, and not to understand its meaning. Let's go over this hadith, inshaAllah ta'ala. The hadith starts by saying, Ihfadillah, Ihfadillah, what does it mean? What is the meaning of Ihfadillah? Four things. I'm going to ask you guys at the ending, if you want to take it down on your mobile phone, if you have the memory of an Imam al Bukhari, then that's good. You don't need to write it down. And if you don't, try to write it down, inshallah. What does the word Ihfadillah mean? What does it mean? Ihfadillah. It means four things. Ihfad hudud Allah. Safeguard the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jal. There's boundaries. There's boundaries that you need to safeguard. The second one is Hukukahu Allah's rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three is Awamirah. 
Allah's commandments. And the fourth one is Nawahi of all these prohibitions. Who can repeat it? Who wants to volunteer to repeat? Ihfarillah means four things. What's the name? It's the same God, the rights of Allah, that was number two. What's number one? The boundaries. The so it's boundaries that we're in. Allah says in the ayah, وَالْحَافِظُونَ لِحُدُودِ اللَّهِ الْحَافِظُونَ لِحُدُودِ اللَّهِ They safeguard the boundaries of Allah. That's number one. Hudud. And there's a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هَفْتَرَضَ فَرَائِضٌ فَلَا تُضَيْعُوهَا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He made for us obligations that we have to get into. Hudud, boundaries. وَحَرَّرَ حُرُمَاتٍ And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala made some things haram, فَلَا تَنْتَهِكُوهَا Don't be caught doing those haram. وَحَدَّ حُرُودًا this is the part of one from the hadith. فَلَا تَعْتَلُوهَا So the first part of Ihfad Allah means what? The boundaries of Allah. Make sure you're not caught leaving this boundary. This country does it have borders? It does, right? Yes? No? Yes? Allah's religion has boundaries. You're not allowed to go outside that boundary. Number two is what? Allah has rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the ayah, هَذَا مَا تُعَلُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيرٍ إِحْبَ بِاللَّهِ هَذَا مَا تُعَلُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيرٍ What does it mean? مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ وَقَدْ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ Muneeb, right? Pay attention to this. This ayah is telling us, remember brothers, I want you to remember, we're going to keep going across from we're going to go over the word Habib, Hib. I'm only going to speak for 15 20 minutes. Just focus 15 20 minutes. Let's not lose track in Shabbat. This hadith is, is a life changing hadith, brother. It's serious. It's a serious hadith. So, what did I say? Ihfadila means say boundary, say, say God, what? The boundaries of Allah. Azza wa Jalla. What's the evidence for that? Well, Hafidun al Hududillah. Okay, the second one is Allah's hukuk, Allah's rights. Allah has hukuk subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot forsake those hukuk. The evidence for that is, هَذَا مَا تُعَلُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَبِيرٍ مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ What about Allah's commandments subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, the commandments of Allah are many things. From the biggest commandments after shahadatayn is the salah. حافظوا على الصلاة والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين. The first, the biggest commandment after the shahadatayn that the person needs to do إحفظ الله أو is what? You have to say God your salah. والذين هم على صلاتهم يحافظون. What happens? They keep coming back. Hip. Save God in your prayer. And can somebody here tell us what it means to save God in prayer? We have it if you know what it means. Hib of the salah. What does it actually mean? Number one, praying the salah on time. Any other? Coming with the prerequisites of the prayer. You will know what a prerequisite means, right? True. Yeah? Bahara. Istiqbal al qibla. Satrul Awwa. All these are conditions that you need to come prior to it, right? What else is Hib al Salah? What else does it mean to save God your prayer? Put your hand up if you know. Or should I start picking up some of you guys? Should I start asking? I will start picking up. Fly Emirates. Arsenal supporter. What does it mean to save God the prayer? What does it actually entail to save God the prayer? Yeah, to pray the salah in a correct manner. What does that mean? It's still ambiguous. Ah, pray to me. Jazakallah. What's your name? Abdul Sabir. It is to pray that the way that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and pray. What do you think it is? Sir, for a minute. Five minutes, okay. What does it mean? Pray. 
protect the prey, what does it actually mean? It's to take your prayers serious. Could have been said that. The Messenger of Allah said in a hadith, لا يحافظ على الوضوء إلا مؤمن. No one. لا يحافظ. The word حفظ again is coming here. No one does حفظ of the wudu except that he's a mu'min. In another hadith, the Prophet he says, من حافظ عليها كان له عند الله عهد أن يدخله الجنة. There's no one who safeguards the salah except that he has a covenant and an oath with Allah Azza wa Jalla that Allah will put him into what? Jannah. You have a promise with Allah Taala that Allah Taala will put you into Jannah. There's another hadith again, the prayer. We're going to keep coming to start the salah. The Prophet said in another hadith, "Man hafaz alayha." Anyone who does shift of the salah, كان له روح وبرهان ونجات يوم القيامة. It's going to be a light for you. It's going to be a proof for you, and it's going to be the cause of you being saved from the hell by the day of judgment. Are we all together, brothers? إحفظ الله from the أوامر. So we mentioned the حقوق, حدود, right? We mentioned the حقوق, right? The evidence for that. We spoke. We're speaking about the أوامر, right? The commandments. What did we say the biggest commandment is? After the shahadat, what did we say is? So we need to understand the importance of another thing that the person needs to do hifz of, which is the awamir of Allah Azza wa Jalla is ذلك كفارة أيمانكم إذا حلفتم قد الله سبحانه وتعالى وحفظوا أيمانكم. Safeguard your promises. Wallahi, be not in this or Wallahi, pass me the ball. Wallahi, this. Wallahi, that. It's funny because even the numbers is now saying Wallahi. Because then you kind of assume it's Wallahi. Huh? The numbers are saying Wallahi. Wahfa Allahi, man, I'm going to safeguard your, your promises that you make. The believer has to what? Has to safeguard. The promises that they make and the wallahi that you say. Let me read a statement of Ibn Qayyim ibn Rajab on you. Listen to the statement of what he says. The wallahi that the Somali say too much. It's again from his book, right? Listen to this. He said, فَإِنَّ الْأَيْمَانَ كَثِيرًا مَا تَقْعَ مِنَ النَّاسِ The oaths, they happen a lot from the people. No, no, this part he said. He said, فَمَنْ حَفَظَ أَيْمَانَهُ دَلَّ عَلَى دُقُولِ الْإِيمَانِ فِي قَلْبِ The person who safeguards their Ayman, their promises that they make, it's a sign of their Ayman. وَكَانَ السَّلَفُ كَثِيرًا يُحَافِظُونَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ The self, they used to really safeguard their Ayman, their promises, based on this ayah, right? And then after that, he says, I can't, I can't find it. He talks about the concept of people just saying Wallahi too much. He said it's an indication that in their heart there is no fear of Allah to be overusing the word Wallahi. It's an indication that the shkashia and Allah is not in their heart. Anyways, how many things did we mention from the commandments of Allah that we need to say God? Salah and also what? Also what? Ah, amen. Another thing that we need to do, which we need to safeguard, and that Allah Ta'ala mentions, subhanahu wa ta'ala is, وَقُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَعُبُّ مِنَ الْوَصَالِ وَيَحْفَضُ فُرُوجَ We have to safeguard our private parts. The Prophet said to the Sahabas one day in the hadith, يَسْتَحِيُّ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ الْحَيَاةِ Be shy of Allah the way he deserves to be shy of. And then the Sahabas, they said, Ya Rasulullah, are we not shy of Allah the way he deserves to be shy of? And then the Messenger said, Man istahaya min Allahi haqqa al-haya falyahfa bin rasa wa ma falyahfa bin rasa falyahfa bin rasa wa ma wa'a 
وَلْيَحْفَظِ الْبَطْنَ وَمَا حَوَى وَلْيَدْخُلِ الْمَوْتَ وَالْبِلَى The Messenger said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, The one who is shy of Allah, then let him what? فَلْيَحْفَظِ الْرَأْسَ وَمَا وَعَى Protect your head, فَلْيَحْفَظ Let him protect his head and everything that is on it. Don't listen to music. Don't watch what is haram. Don't listen, speak what is haram. Your head and everything that is on it. And also your stomach. Don't take drugs and alcohol. Don't eat pork. Don't take haram things. Protect your stomach. Remember death and its trials and tribulations. The message is in the hadith. من يضمن لي ما بين لحيه وما بين فخذي أن أضمن له الجنة أما من يحفظ ما بين لحيه من الرواية Who is going to save God that which is between his two thighs and his two lips and I will promise him Jannah This is the prohibition protecting your what your ears Ibn Qayyim in his kitab al-Dawa al-Dawa he said something very strong Muhammad al-Ghazali also said in his kitab al-Shaarul Mudid something very beneficial which is the channel to a person's heart is the ears and the nose, the, the head and everything that's on it and the stomach are really what goes to the person's heart. You hear music, it will affect your heart. When a person commits a sin, a black dot is made in. So he's watching something haram, he's listening to something haram, you know, he's talking haram, he's saying things that are prohibited from him. It comes from that which you do. So, ihfadillah, brothers, means, and sisters, it means protecting the head and what is on it. The ears, the nose. I mean, not the nose, I don't know how you do it. But the ears and the eyes and the mouth. And your stomach and whatever goes inside it. Does that make sense? In the sab'a wal basa wal fuada. You're going to be asked about what you listen to. You're going to be asked about your heart. You're going to be asked about all of that. This is interrogation, the day of judgment. Now we've taken uh, that part. Again, your private part, brothers. They protect their private parts. This ayah mentioned that you're only allowed to fulfill your desires with two. Only your wife and that which your right hand possesses. And then your wife, your wife, we have that today in the world. There's no other way you can fulfill your desires. If you want to fulfill your desires, you have to fast. Any other way other than a wife or fasting, if you fulfill your desires, then you will not enter under when the name of the Furujim happened. I'm going to read a powerful statement on you. Idris al-Khawlani, rahimahullah, he mentioned, he said, Anna awwala ma, ma wasa Allahu adama inda ihbatihi ila al-ard ishibu ibadhi wa alla yada'ahu illa fi halalib. Nabi Allah, Adam, when he was taken out of Jannah and he was told to come down to this earth, the first wasiyya, the first advice that was given to him was, Protect your private part. And that he was told not to place his private part and to do his desires in halal. In halal. Picture this. Adam is taken out of Jannah. The first thing Allah advises him is what? Are you with me? Like, and of course, there's muqaddimat. There's, there's things that happened before that. Now, brothers, pay attention. The person came with Ihfadillah. He did the four that we just mentioned. Okay? He came with what? Hibru Hududi, wa Hukuki, wa Wamirihi, wa Nawahi. The person did stay within the boundaries. In Al Halal Abayinu, wa in Al Haram Abayinu, wa Bayinu, wa Mumun Mushkabihat, la Yalam Muna Khadiru in the Nas, wa Manita Kashuat, wa Manita Wali, wa Yudi, wa Mawaka Fishuat, wa Kahi Haram, wa Kahi Haram, wa Nasi Manish, wa Yakahi. ألا وإن بكوك ملك حما ألا وإن حما الله محارم ألا وإن في الجسد مضى إذا صح صح الجسد كله إذا فسد فسد الجسد كله ألا وجل أنا. This hadith talks about the concept of the hudud, the boundaries. Am I making sense? 
Why do I feel like I'm talking to myself? Everyone's with me, right? We're together, right? We all understand what means ihfadillah. The person came with ihfadillah. Now what's going to happen is what? Ihfadillah. Ihfad. You came with, with what we just mentioned. Allah is going to protect you now. Allah is going to take care of you. By the way, this concept of ihfadillah, yahfadka, it's a concept well known amongst the Arabs. It's called al-jazaa'u min jinsi al That the reward is in accordance to your doing. You will be rewarded in accordance to your actions. And it's commonly used in the Quran. Allah says, وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِي أُوْفِي بِعَهْدِكُمْ فَذْكُرُوا لِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ إِنْ تَنْصُرُ اللَّهِ يَنْصُرْكُمْ It's common, right? And many other examples that you guys can probably bring. Does that make sense? Allah says in the ayah, وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِي Fulfill my promise that you made with me. أُوْفِي بِعَهْدِكُمْ I fulfill the promise I made to you. In another ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, فَذْكُرُونِي رَمَمَّ مِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ I will remember you. In تَنْصُرُ اللَّهِ If you give victory to Allah's religion, تَنْصُرْكُمْ Allah will give victory to you. So this is a concept that's common. So the hadith of إِحْفَضِ اللَّهِ يَحْفَضْكَ is going according to that way. What will Allah do for you now? Now you came with all of those four that I mentioned. What are you going to get? Allah is going to do two fundamental things for you. Are we all paying attention here? And this is where I'm going to conclude. I just want you to all listen. I'm taking all of this, by the way. Everything I have said, I'm taking it from the Kitab, Nurul Iqtibas, the Ishkati Wasiyat in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Atlas. I think that's what it's called. If you do, Yahfadillah, Yahfadka will happen for you. Allah will protect in the Rajab when he says, وَحِبُّ اللَّهِ لِعَبْدِي يَتَغَمَّ النُّعَيْنِ Allah protecting his slave, it consists of two things. Allah will protect you, but in two ways. The first one is حِبُّهُ لَهُ فِي مَصَالِحِ الدُّنْيَا Your worldly issues, don't worry, it's taken care of. Your worldly issues will be taken care of. Our worldly issue consists of what? Our health. Allah will take care of your health, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your wealth. Allah wa ta'ala will take care of that. Allah says in the ayah, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَرُونَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ What does it mean, يَحْفَرُونَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ They will be protecting for you مِنْ كُلِّ مَا أَمْرَهُ اللَّهِ Everything Allah, مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ قَدَادَةٍ مِنْ دَعَبَةِ السَّلُوسِ سُدِّي أبو الرياء أبو علي الرياء سعيد بن جبير ضحاك بن مزاح أيمة التفسير؟ they all said it means Allah will protect for you مصالح الدنيا والآخرة the world the affairs and your hereafter all of that Allah will take care of سبحانه وتعالى let me mention some stories and examples for you are we all together yes Abu Qib al-Tabari, Abu Qib al-Tabari, Abu Qib al-Tabari, they said he reached 150,000, 50, 150 years. How old did he become? You guys do the Somali. 150 years he swallowed it. One day he was on a, a boat. You know how a boat, how big a boat is, it's smaller than the big, right? He was on top of a boat and he came to the shore, 150 year old man, and he jumped from the boat. He jumped on, onto the earth and he stood on his legs. How old are we talking about brothers? 150. Was he able to do that because he had a, a gym membership card? You need to ask ourselves this question. How was he able to stand on his legs after reaching 150? It was a very tough job. Okay? Some of us here can't do it, man. Did he spend... Did he do it? Did he come in the gym? What was the situation? What happened here? 
How did he manage to do this? Let's investigate. The students brought Ru'u they scolded him. They said, Ah, oh, Shaykh, don't do this to yourself. You're going to die. You're going to cause yourself brain damage and this and that. And he gave a powerful response. He said, These lineage, sorry, these limbs, sorry. These limbs, we safeguarded it from sins when we were young. The sirah when we were young. And now that we're old, Allah is going to take care of this. Right now, Allah is going to take care of this bones for us. When we were young, what did we do? We stayed away from, we didn't have Allah. Those, that's what it means. When I was young, I did that. Now that I am old, Allah is taking care of it. And Imam al Junaid, he saw a man begging the people to go, begging, please, money, money. Nobody said. He said, This man, when he was young, he forsaked Allah's commandments and his prohibitions and his book and his hudud. The four. He forsaked all of that. فَضَيَّعَهُ اللَّهُ فِي كِبَرِهِ And now that he is old, Allah has forsaken him. This man, when he was young, he forsaked Allah and now Allah has forsaken him. He didn't come with the The day you grow old, brothers, now you're young. But when you grow old, the poet he said, Ibn Malik brings it, Ibn Aqib brings it in the Shahid for the word low, the Alfid Ibn Malik. What did he say? Mali ida jadabtuha sa'aytu akibarun alami an baytu. Layta wa ali yafa'u shaydan laytu, layta shababam bu'a fashtaraytu. Brothers, he was, old, he, became, he was a man, he became old, he threw a bucket inside the well. And then he pulled out the bucket. He's pulling out the bucket. And he said, Mali ida jadab to ha Said. Why is it that when I pull out the bucket, I say, ah, Said to me? I say, ah. Why is it that when I try to pull out the bucket, I'm making noise? I can't do it properly. Akiba al Alani Ambaitu. Is it old age? Or is it a woman that's made me like this? The Arabs, the word, they use the word bait as a woman. <laughs> Bear with me, brothers. Is it old age or is it responsibility of marriage? Bear with me, brothers. Then he said to himself, brothers, listen to this, please, please. He said to himself, he said, I wish, what would, would, would I wish benefit me? And then he said to himself, I wish being a youth again, was something that was sold in the market, I can go and I can buy it. I would have loved it to be somebody who's young again and I can, he's wishing for it. But what's happened about this? It's very, it's gone, it's gone. It's, he doesn't have it anymore. Another point, another, another story, another story. Uh, Muhammad ibn Munkadir, he said the following, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَحْفَرُ بِالْغَجْوِ الصَّالِحِ وَلَدَهُ وَوَلَدُ وَلَدِهِ وَقَرْيَتِهِ الَّتِي هُوَ فِيهَا Muhammad ibn Munkadir said, if you come with إِحْفَضِ اللَّهِ يَحْفَقْ إِحْفَضِ اللَّهِ, if you come with that, Allah will not only protect your, your worldly affairs, but He will also protect the worldly affairs of your children, his children, his children, his children, and the whole village because of you. And you know what he recited? وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا You know the story of Surah Al-Kahf that we should have read today, right? That I wrongly didn't go to the Bible. This story is talking about Hadir, right? And Musa alayhi salam, right? Who did Allah send to protect the wealth of the young orphans that their father and parents died in? Who protected for them? How they came. The father, the, the, the two parents are gone, they died, right? Allah put how they to protect it for them because their father and their mother were righteous people. Even if you die and you were a good person and you came with Allah will protect your children for you. Look what Sayyidina Musayyab said. 
سرين سر يا بني يا ابي يا ابني ما يسام ابي يا بني يا بني اني لا ازيد في صلاتي من اجلك i am going to increase in my prayer because of you my son سرين مسيب سين سي سان i am going to increase in the prayer because of you because I hope that Allah will protect you for me. And then Sayyid Ibn Musayy was crying to recite the ayah. Alhamdulillah, when you come from it, for it, with it, Allah will protect your children for you. Allah will, your whole dunya will be taken care of. Allah says in the ayah, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْضُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِ You came to talk about Allah Azza wa Jalla وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ Allah will give you an open and we will take care of this and Allah will provide for you at a place you were not expecting I'll give you guys an example of how he said it and this that I'm going to mention is going to show you how these people became. Nukila Ampa'ab is self. It was transmitted from some of the early generation when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to be like them. Say Ameen. They came with Ihfadillah, right? I will tell you, brothers. They came with Ihfadillah. Allah will protect their world and affairs so much so that some of them, they would leave their camels because they had to go to the Jum'ah. And they have to go to the jama'ah. They will take their finger. They will make a line around the camel. And they will say, camel, stay within that line. A finger in the sand. And they will walk away. And they will go to the jama'ah. And Allah will take their right hands for them. No, I don't say leave your car's engine on in front of the masjid and pray. But what I mean by that is, Allah will protect your belongings and your stuff for you. Are you with me, brothers? And the same thing happened to me. I had a khutbah to Jum'ah last, last Friday, was khutbah to Jum'ah in this same masjid I came to. And I had to park the car in. I had to pay. And I didn't have the. Uh, you had to pay with the phone. So I forgot to take a picture of the location codes. I said, what, what location? I didn't have it. I came already to the masjid and the Jum'ah, the Khatib was right in front of me. He's going to walk to the open. I said, Ya Allah, I don't want a ticket. I don't want to pay for 60 pounds. Are you with me, brothers? So I just came to the masjid and I prayed. And no one touched the I hope so. Can I give you a ticket without, you, without sticking a paper in your front car? I'm extraordinary way. So do you understand all do you all understand this brother? Jahfadillah <laughs> will bring you what? Now I'm going to mention the last one and today's lecture is going to be over. We said Allah is going to protect you, Allah will be a best for you. And what else is Allah going to protect for you, brothers? Ahirah. Which is the greatest one. Allah is going to protect your what? Allah is going to protect your deen for you, your religion. Your deen is going to be protected. Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he came to the ayah, Yahulu bain al mari, la yahulu bain al mari wa kalbi, right? Is that the ayah? The ayah with Amr Sulaim, with Allah, 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 يحول بين المؤمن وبين المعصية التي تجري إلى النار أما تجوه This ayah Allah will get between you and committing the sin Allah will take the religion for you Whenever you want to do sin Allah will get between you يحول بين الباقي وقلبي Between you and the sin Allah will praise the hadith You can't even do it if you wanted to because you came with the Allah right at the beginning, you did that. Now your heart is whispering to you. The nafs might sometimes call you to something evil. When you want to do it, you get tired. The car, the engine doesn't work. The phone doesn't ring. The network somehow is gone. All together, brothers. Based on your hadith, 
ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب الي من نوافل حتى احبه فاذا حضرت كنت سمع الذي يسمع بي وبصر الذي يبصر بي ويده الذي يمشي بها ويغلفه ويده الذي يبطش بها ويغلفه الذي يمشي بها ولينسانني لاعطينا ولينستعانني لاعطينا Allah protects everything for you, your ears, your eyes, your nose, everything. He's protecting for you. Are we all together? That's the fire that it means. I'm going to give you guys some story. There was a man. A man one day went and he entered inside a place where it had so many trees. In other words, there was no surveillance. He felt that when he went inside the garden, that no one can see him in the says. And the man, he went by himself and he said, No, hello to Hauna. If I stay here by myself, and I do a sin, when can I Who's going to see me? No one's going to see me. I wanted to do haram there. فَسَمِعَ صَوْتًا The man had a noise. مَنَأَ مَا بَيْنَ حَافَتَيْهِ الْغَيْضَ He had a noise that was loud enough to fill the park. And of course, there was a message that was sent to his mind and it was a response to his question which is أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ الْمَطِيرُ Because he asked the question, right? Who can see me if I do my sin here? And it was then said to him, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He is the one who can see what you're doing. You all know the famous story. ثلاثه نفر مما كان قبلكم حتى اواهم اواهم المبيت الى غار فتهروا فانحدر صخره من الجبل فسدت عليهم الغار فقالوا انه لا ينجيكم من هذه الصخره الا ان الله تعالى بصالح اعمالكم فكان الاول منهم اللهم انه كان لي ابوان الشيخان الى حد The three men that went inside the cave, two or four, you guys remember it? You will know the three men that went into the cave and then فَسَدَّتْ عَلِيهُمُ الْغَارِ فَقَالُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ هَذِي الصَّخْرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَقْرُوا اللَّهَ تَعَالَى بِصَالِهِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ فقال واحد منهم one of them said اللهم إنه كان لي أبوان شيخان كبيران وكنت لا أرضي قبلهم أهلا ولا مالا The first one said, oh Allah, I have two old parents and I never used to feed anyone before my parents and one day I came home after a an issue that happened to me, I came home late. You know when the parents become old, they become used to a routine. Ah. So, I also thought that, you know? You guys get it? He came late. When he came late, his mother and father were sleeping. He took the two cup of milk and he stood on top of his mother and his father's head. Stood there, he didn't move. His children were asking for them because his children, they eat the leftovers that his mother or father have. He didn't give his children and his wife and his family anything. He waited for his mother and his father to wake up. And then he gave them the milk. They drank the cup of cups. They became... As soon as my father saw Quran, it was both of them to have their milk. So he gave it to them. The mentioned, until it was Fajr time, imagine that. He was standing all night, and he doesn't want to wake them up because they're sleeping. And he said, Allah, if I did this for your sake, move this rock. Are we together? Allah moved it. The Prophet said, Allah is 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 Allah but that's not the part I want from the story. The story, the one I want from it, is the second man. The second man said, Allah, I had a cousin, a girl. I love this girl so much. I came to her one day and I said to her, I want to do haram with you. But she rejected. Years went by. Poverty hit. Hunger striked. She came to me, she needs money. Well, so I need money. I said, I'll give it to you, the money that you need, but you have to do haram first. Let's do haram. She said, okay. Because of the need that she had it for her for the money, she said, okay. I will tell her about this. As he said, فَلَمَّا جَلَسْتُ when I sat down, 
مقعد إلا أن يجلسه الرجل من زوجته When I came to a position of a man with his wife قال she said to me تقي الله ولا تنفق خاطب إلا بحقي تقي الله عز وجل سيد فير الله عز وجل You're going to use haram Don't do what is not lawful for you Look what he did فقمت عنها وتركت الدنانير عندها I stood up I left the money with her and I walked away What do we take from the hadith? Allah protected him. He did not use it now. But that is that you all know Nabi Allah Yusuf. When the woman presented herself to him, Allah says, كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَلْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِ Does anyone here know what the difference between Mukhlas and Mukhlas is? The meaning, the meaning, you know when the, the self observation of that. We just want the meaning. First of all, let me explain the ayah. Nabi Allah Yusuf, Allah Ta'ala says, Allah says, Kadalika and like that. We divert, Kadalika li nasrif al su'a wal fahsha. Allah says, like that, we divert anything that can harm a person's religion. Allah Ta'ala about this. Nabi Allah Yusuf, did Allah divert him? Did Allah, did Allah protect him? Ah, Yusuf, did Allah protect him? Why did Allah protect him? In no, in Ibadina, Iblis, when he was taken out of Jannah, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ سَرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِينَ He told the ayah, ثُمَّ لَأَتِيَنَّ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدِينَ وَمِنْ خَرْفِهِمْ No, no, إِلَّا هَا فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي He said, أَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ سَرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِينَ لا فبما أغويتني هذا القرآن سورة الصاد اللي يعني لا فبما أغويتني زين وزينا ها فبعزتك لا أغوي أنا إلا عبادك منهم شيطان said that the only people is gonna save is the only people شيطان is gonna be able to harm are who سر الله يوسف ودي قبل يحفظ الله. ودي الله تفهم. يحفظ الله في تحت من الله يسوع. مخلص is the person who is مستمر على الإخلاص. That's what مخلص means. When he mentions it, رحمه الله. A مخلص is a person who is consistent في الإخلاص. فصارت فكفصه يسأل it's something مستمر على صاحبه لا يفارق. It's consistent sincerity. Than just the mere sincerity. The person is always sincere in every situation. When he doesn't say or do anything only for Allah Azza wa Jalla. Their movements, their silence, they crush everything for Allah. Anyway, the point is, brothers. You come with Ihfad Allah, what will Allah do for you? Ihfad ka Allah will protect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our worldly affairs for us. And may Allah azza wa jalla protect our religious affairs for us. Inna hu wa li yudhalika wa al-qadhi wa alayhi.